subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chansom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 27th of January. PM Modi host India Central Asia Summit says cooperation essential for regional security. Tata Group takes over Air India. Chairman says will make it world class airline. And. Afghanistan hanging by thread UN chief tells security council And now for all the details Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday virtually held the first India Central Asia summit with presidents of Kazakhstan Kyrgyzstan Tajikistan Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan PM Modi said Central Asia is central to India's vision of an integrated and stable extended neighborhood. The major area of focus during the conference were trade and connectivity. Modi also underscored that mutual cooperation has become essential for regional security and stability in the context of developments in Afghanistan. The summit came as a follow-up of the regional security dialogue on Afghanistan between national security advisers of India and Central Asian countries in New Delhi last November. In Central Asia, each central to India's vision of an integrated and stable extended neighborhood. दूसरा उद्देश हमारे सहयोग को एक प्रभावी स्ट्रक्चर देना है इससे विभिन्न स्तरों पर और विभिन्न स्टेक होल्डर्स के बीच रेगुलर इंटरेक्शन का एक ढांचा स्थापित होगा India Startup Group on Thursday formally took control of the state run carrier Air India finalizing a 2.4 billion US dollar deal to regain its ownership after nearly 69 years Tata Sons chairman N Chandrasekharan said he was totally delighted to begin a new endeavor and will make it a world class airline. India's Tata Group which originally founded Air India formally regained the ownership of the state run carrier after a gap of nearly 69 years on Thursday finalizing a 2.4 billion deal with the Indian government. The Air India was officially handed over to the Tata Group shortly after Tata Sons chairman N Chandrasekharan called on Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. After a competitive bidding process the government had on October 8 last year sold Air India to the auto to steel conglomerate ending years of struggle to privatize the financially troubled airline that was kept afloat using taxpayer funds. Chandra Sekaran said the group will endeavor to build it into a world class airline that makes every Indian proud. Totally delighted. We are totally delighted that this process is complete and very happy to have Air India back in the Tata group. We look forward to working with everyone to create a world class airline the airline with its maharaj mascot was founded by grd tata in 1932 and nationalized in 1953 the purchase of the dead ridden air india will give tata immediate access to valuable flying rights and landing slots but industry executives say it will be an uphill battle to turn around the carrier's financials and service levels With the third wave of the coronavirus pandemic showing signs of waning in the national capital, authorities have decided to revoke several COVID restrictions. Weekend curfew has been lifted, odd even curbs for markets have been removed and restaurants and cinemas can reopen at 50% capacity. The Delhi Disaster Management Authority (DDMA) on Thursday decided to remove the weekend curfew and odd-even rule for shops in the national capital 
as the number of COVID-19 cases have been falling steadily in the last few weeks. However, the night curfew will continue without any change and schools and colleges will remain shut for now. Cinemas, restaurants and bars can operate at 50% capacity. The number of guests at weddings has been raised to 200 from 20. Government offices have also been allowed to reopen with 50% staff. The decision to ease curbs enforced during the Omicron surge was taken at a meeting of the DDMA in which the Delhi government and Lieutenant Governor Anil Bejul were present. Delhi has seen a dip in the number of cases and the positivity rate and active cases stand at 38,315. India's health ministry in a press briefing on Thursday said that 10 states with highest COVID-19 cases have reported 77% of the total active cases in the country. India in the last 24 hours recorded 286,384 new COVID-19 cases and 573 deaths, as per the Health Ministry's data on Thursday, taking the total COVID-19 cases to 40.37 million. The ministry also said that vaccination is helping the country with lesser hospitalization and less severity among COVID patients in the country. Meanwhile, the Drugs Controller General of India on Thursday granted conditional market approval for COVID-19 vaccines, Covishield and Covaxin, for use in the adult population subject to certain conditions. Private hospitals and clinics will be able to purchase these vaccines and administer them. India has so far administered over 1.6 billion total doses so far. In news from Pakistan, despite an all-time high inflation, Pakistan's finance minister Shaukat Tareen has said there will be no decline in the price hike in the country for the next three months. This comes as the government passed a mid-year budget this month that withdraws tax exemptions and introduces further budgetary tightening. Despite frequent price hike in Pakistan, the country's finance minister, Shaukat Areen, on Wednesday said there will be no decline in the price hike in the country for the next three months. Addressing a press conference in Islamabad, Tareen said the prices hiked up to 90% in international market. Trade deficit increased due to the rise in oil prices while the Afghan crisis has weighed down Pakistan's currency. Tareen said pinning the inflation to external factors. The government also hiked the price of petrol by Rs 3.01 per litre this month to meet the petrol levy targets as a part of the deal with International Monetary Fund. Locals in Karachi claimed it has become hard for the poor to survive. At present, the cost of petrol is Rs 147.83 per litre, whereas high-speed diesel costs Rs 144.62 per litre. Petrol is this comes as the government tabled a media budget in parliament earlier this month, despite protests from the opposition parties. The IMF has made further budgetary tightening a condition for the revival of a stalled $6 billion funding program. Afghanistan is hanging by a thread. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres told the Security Council on Wednesday, calling for countries to authorize all transactions needed to carry out humanitarian activities in the Taliban-ruled state. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres told the Security Council on Wednesday that Afghanistan is hanging by a thread with millions suffering extreme hunger, education and social services on the brink of collapse and a lack of liquidity limiting the capacity to reach people in need. Guterres again called for countries to issue general licenses covering transactions necessary to all humanitarian activities. I repeat my call to issue general licenses covering transactions necessary to all humanitarian activities. We need to give financial institutions and commercial partners legal assurance and they can work, that they can work with humanitarian operators without fear of breaching sanctions. The United Nations earlier this month appealed for 4.4 billion US dollars in humanitarian aid for Afghanistan in 2022. 
On Wednesday, it said it needed a further $3.6 billion for health and education, basic infrastructure, promotion of livelihoods and social caution, specifically the needs of women and girls. Some $9.5 billion US dollars in Afghan central bank reserves remain blocked abroad. The international development support has dried up since the Taliban seized power in August. Donors seek to use the money as leverage over the Taliban on issues including human rights. UN Special Envoy on Afghanistan, Deborah Lyons, called on the Islamic State to initiate an intra-Afghan dialogue for national reconciliation at the Special Conference on the Afghan Situation on Wednesday. According to Lyons, the Islamic Emirate has taken some steps to fulfill their commitments, but there is an emerging environment of intimidation and a contraction of the media space. Lyons and Secretary General both mentioned concerns over Afghan girls not attending school and the recent disappearance of Afghan women's rights activists. Moving on to news from Nepal. The active cases of COVID-19 have exceeded the 90,000 mark in Nepal as the infection rate hovers around 40% fueled by the new Omicron variant. As per health experts, though hospitalizations have been low, the elderly people and those with prolonged illnesses are the most affected. Nepal's active COVID-19 cases have crossed the 90,000 mark with elderly people the most affected. Over the last few days, the Himalayan nation has witnessed approximately 10,000 new coronavirus cases each day, with infection rate fueled by the new Omicron variant. Though hospitalizations have been low, elderly people and those with prolonged illnesses are amongst those admitted at hospitals, as per experts. Nepal began giving COVID-19 vaccine booster shots to frontline workers on January 17 and has made it compulsory to carry vaccination cards to avail public services. Authorities last week also extended an earlier ban on large public gatherings in the hill-ringed Kathmandu Valley until February 12 to try to control the virus spread. Trams are a crucial part of the history of India's East and West Bengal state. For years, it had been a mode of transportation in Kolkata. But with advancement in the field of transportation, the tram had begun to lose its relevance with fewer passengers boarding it. Restoring the glory of the tram cars, authorities have refurbished a tram car and converted it into a restaurant reviving nostalgic legacy of the city. Tram had been an important mode of transportation in the 19th century in India's eastern Calcutta, now named Kolkata. Ensuring that tram does not roll off into the sunset and lose its glory. The West Bengal government has refurbished a tram car and converted it into a 20-seater restaurant. The restaurant, styled after tram, is drawing customers with its nostalgia factor. Opened near Mother Wax Museum in Newtown in Kolkata, it is themed after the tram with open public transportation windows, bills in the form of tickets, foundations shaped like wheels on tracks, engine-style storeroom, station-themed exteriors, among others. सबसे ज्यादा अच्छा लगा कि ये बचपन का जो मेमोरी है हम लोगों का ट्राम पे चढ़ने का और घूमने का ये थोड़ा हम दूसरा बार फील कर रहे हैं तो इसीलिए यहां पे आया है और यहां पर जो ओपन जो एंबियंस है तो इसको हम बचपन का एक बार मेमोरी फिर से लौट के आया है ट्राम स्टार्टेड इन कोलकाता इन ब्रिटिश एरा इन 1902 एंड वर यूज्ड बाय मोस्ट कम्यूटर्स However, with the advent of subway trains, buses and personal cars, 
the mode of transportation slowly faced shutdown and now exists only for namesake. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.